So, hello and welcome to another Budget Model Railways video on our loft layout, although actually at the moment I'm working on my bench in the study. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done a video, we are getting very busy with other things. And also, I know a few people have commented they like our videos because unlike some people who do a 35 minute video on one new bit of wall that's been built, I think it's important that we wait until we've had enough to make the video interesting. So this is quite a lot that's happened on here. So this is my railway station for the high level, the two high level tracks on the side. I think I mentioned in the last video where this was going to go. So I've been busy building. So what we've got here is the super quick station building, which I bought for about seven pound. This is an old super quick station master's house, which I bought for about two pound. And I've basically glued that on to make it look like what most stations were actually, which is a big house and a small station. And then the canopy is another old second hand hide to my head from a, a box of old super quick bits. So that's made quite a nice station building. The platform's interesting. I bought this second hand a few years ago. It's actually 50 years old and it's before super quick started doing fencing. It's brick wall. And interestingly in it was this, which is a flyer. Um, I'll tell you how old I know how old it was because there's a header card somewhere for it, which is still in old imperial money. Um, and interestingly, there's a supermarket and some low relief modern buildings that aren't in the current range. I do actually have one of these. I managed to get it cheap on eBay, but it's interesting how the buildings have varied. So what we've then got here is there's no room in the top for a good siding. But reading one of the books, great book by Cyril, Free, Cyril Freezer on steam railways, he points out that many lines simply had a lock-up shed on the platform and the goods were unloaded and barrowed across the barrow crossing. And of course I've got this lovely lock-up shed that I built for that layout and then used the cottages instead. So that's all ready to go. All I've just done now is built a little brick plinth and we'll put some more detailing in and that stands on the station. So I then found this, which is again, came in the big box of secondhand super quick bits. I think it's off the engine shed, but that's going to make a great little taxi office. So we've got a nice little station scene there. Now I could use a super quick footbridge, but I now want to use this to do my low level station with the high level station onto the platforms. So what we have here is a day pole footbridge that when Doug was about 10 and still heavily into model railways, he made and painted. Um, so what I've done is I've shortened it, taken the middle piece out, uh, we'll repaint that and that will sit quite nicely there. Now these are the buildings that should have come off this station, they sit along there, but I didn't like the look of that, so they're going to make me some rather nice buildings and canopies for that side of the platform. Now this platform will be another six inches longer, I've got uh, just ordered another platform and so that will then fill the whole meter that I have under the eaves. I have to say these are the new super quick kits, very different to the old ones, really good instructions, took me about 20 minutes to build those um, platforms. So I'm a big fan of uh, the super quick, especially the new ones now. Uh, we've had people going, no, 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 Metcalf are much better. Well, they're nice buildings Metcalf and they're robust, but they're almost twice the price and they're also somewhat larger which isn't really right for, for like people like us where we haven't got a lot of room. So this I think is going to look wonderful when we're up in the loft. And I also found, I bought these, these again old 1950s sheets, and I got Doug to scan them and print them for me. And I've just stuck a couple of rows there on a piece of cereal pack card, made a concrete plinth, and this will go on the back wall. So what we'll do now, um, we'll go upstairs, and we'll show you what we've done in the loft because I've changed the track plan up there and we've got some exciting news on things like fiddle yards and so on. But I just wanted to show you this station down here because there isn't room for it up there. So here we go. This is with the station you've just seen uh, actually in place. Um, I've also done a bit of work. I've started painting this um, old day pole footbridge that Doug made all when he was about nine or 10. So it's had a coat of paint. I've also now just finished the platform over the back edge. At the moment, they're just supported on boxes, but it gives you the idea. Now, interestingly, this station now is two and a half feet. It's been extended by six inches by an old insert of platform I've had. That one is now three feet. Again, it's had a foot extension um, by buying two platform kits, but there you go. 
uh, and I'll show you over the other side in a minute. So this I'm really pleased with. We've got a nice through station, little bit of goods, proper station building, taxi office, shelter, footbridge, uh, and also a signal box. And we'll give a little shout out here to John Winterbottom, my wife's friend Claire's dad, who passed away a while ago, big railway man, and he's, um, his, his widow, his wife's asked us to have a, a little look at trying to get rid of some of his old railways for him. Um, but she kindly let us keep a few buildings and things. Um, so thank you, John. Your signal box lives on because that's going to be perfect now. Ties in lovely with that station. So that's a complete station as far as I'm concerned. Signal box, the whole works. So if we go around the other side a bit now, you can see that we've worked on the back scene here. So I've built three more buildings. I can't remember which ones we've shown in previous videos, but there's a couple of new ones there. Just made using super quick papers for the detail. So we've got lots of detail on it. Um, I can have a bit of height above the tracks. That was what you saw earlier, just made out of a printout chimney there to hide it. But by putting a back scene behind it, I don't know if I can zoom in a bit. Um, I'm probably in the way. You get an extra feeling of depth. The buildings against the blue were very stark, whereas here they just blend in. It's much harder now to see what's low relief and what's back scene, which is really the idea. So we'll build some more buildings along there. Um, the other little change then is down here, where I've taken this out, cut that arch out, it was one of these, put a, uh, some yellow brick in there and a piece of black at the back. I'll find a car that I'm not too bothered about, cut it in half and put the rear end there so it's going out through the tunnel. Thank you to one of our contributors who showed us that. I could use the front end going the other way. Too. I could use the front end going the other way. Um, one of our contributors had done that with an uh, Airfix Loco kit in an engine shed. Brilliant, brilliant idea. End of an engine shed, inch deep, and it's got a Loco coming out of it. So thank you, that's where the idea came from. So then if we come down here, I've today finished this. This is the island platform. Now this again has been extended. Fortunately, I didn't need to buy two kits because I had a load of old platforms of this line around. So this has come out at over three feet now. This one, of course, the original one at four feet. Uh, and they are super and they are quick. Well done, super quick. And then obviously we'll have the island buildings on here. I did show last time, I think, that we changed the track plan. Was that on the last video? So, um, oh, did I explain about this? So this now, this is going to be a little wharf siding running down. We've got our boat in place, a couple of nice buildings. I won't use it a lot for shunting, but I really want to get the water in here. We went to all the trouble of dropping this area. So this will be like a little waterway now in part of the town. Now, what I've also done through here, this was a bay siding and I wasn't happy with the goods yard. And this bay road will now simply bend round and go into the siding. And the wonderful thing was that I barely had to move this, but this is the advantage of using track screws and ballast mat. It took me 10 minutes to move this. If I'd ballasted it, it would have been an evening's work, write the track off and start again, because all I had to do is move it half an inch. But a little bit of set track, all this is set track. There's no flexi track here in any of the track work. So what this will mean is I can use it as a bay platform, but I can also propel wagons into the good siding. Um, this will become a coal yard because it's a town, good shed and a good, spare goods road. So plenty of shunting potential if I want to shunt. Um, now, then the big change is round the back on the fiddle yard. So since we last spoke, this has actually gone through two different evolutions. So the first evolution was to realize that this could be a four road fiddle yard going that way. And this could be a three yard fiddle yard going that way, which meant I could run trains either way, albeit a bit short off that one. However, the other night standing here tinkering, I realized that I could put a kinked loop in here which now means I have a passing loop. Now that means between the two bays I have over there and this passing loop that I can potentially run um, three trains because I've got two loops there and two so I can run three trains. It also means that I can take a loco off here and if I want run it round and run the train the other way. These are this, this track is five coaches long, this one is four coaches long. When I move the controllers, because <laughs> they're now in the way, this one can run the whole length. But at the moment, it's quite handy as a loco siding. 
So it would mean that I could run two long trains in here, change my locos. So I'm really pleased about this now. It is a bit convoluted, but it means we've got a passing loop through the fiddle yard and I've got a fiddle yard I like. So this for the moment, no longer scenic. That's, that's the big change. At a later stage, who knows, because I've got all sorts of plans, but I'm really quite excited now to have uh, a, a proper fiddle yard that will enable me to run the layout. So if we go back over this side again, the big question I'm, I'm dealing with at the moment, as you all know, let's pretend that's our station building. The original plan is to put the station building there. Off eBay, I've got a couple of really good books on London stations, and obviously this is a very common format. The station on a road bridge down onto the platform. However, one or two of the stations, and this is why I like buying the old books and having a read, the station runs here. And what I've got is I've got a spare one of these that I could put this walkway across and the station building then goes there and runs this way so gives me two options if it goes here this then becomes a bit of a street scene and this becomes a whole street scene retaining wall here if i put the station there it simplifies this because this can just become a road bridge but it does limit what i can do here so i'm a bit unsure at the moment probably going to go back to that idea a wide bridge street scene level crossing street scenes through there um, I also got some of the little super quick Tudor house kind of things not Tudor the little cottage things which can go in there so it's coming along that it might be a bit more town scene and very little countryside um, especially once we get the little wharf scene down there got a plan of a little l-shaped building loading dock the overhanging loading things whatever they're called like i've got on that building um, so if you imagine this i guess there uh, and another building here that would make a really nice industrial um, in fact <laughs> there you go i might have solved it already I might actually be able to use that building this is how i plan people I just plonk things down and see what they look like, but that doesn't look too bad because we could put a loading dock there onto the barges. Mm, we'll see. The river will stop about here somewhere. And now because I wanted this as a grass bank, but you can see with this station, there's no room. Have to be a retaining wall. So it still needs to be a street scene with a bridge through here. This potentially was going to be a hill start of the countryside, but I might tinker now with doing it as a town. But we'll see. The really important thing is Doug said, Doug's not seen any of this. He's come up and suddenly gone, oh, oh, I'm really quite excited about this. We're, we're suddenly getting ideas and layouts. And I think that's the way I feel about it. Now we know what we're doing. I'm excited about it again, which is probably what's been missing. Just doing that tonight with the back scenes and that working so well and using things like these platforms that are working, it's coming along quite quickly. And as you can see, the locos are going to look just fabulous running through here. You know, lovely blue diesel era industrial town. So, yeah, we're getting quite excited about this now. There's a lot going on. I'm really taken with this station. You know, that's the kind of station why you have a loft. Because it's a four foot, four foot long station, as is the other one. So we've got two big stations now up in the loft. So, uh, yeah, lots happening. Was really sorry the videos aren't as frequent as we would like. Doug's beginning to get busy with mocks. I'm very busy with my other hobby. Um, notwithstanding, I'm supposed to be retired. Um, but we'll get what we can done. Uh, we've got some more new locos recently. Um, and we'll talk about those perhaps in a little video. But there we go. Lots happened. Uh, I'd be interested to know on people's views on the station. Alongside or under the bridge. Um, yeah, and as always, thank you for watching. We really do appreciate the comments. Stick with us. I'm sorry if the videos are a little intermediate, um, but as we do more, then we'll update you. So as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you again soon.
Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.